Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite nootropic compounds, which is phosphatidylserine. So let's dive right in. All right guys, so I know a lot of you have probably never heard of phosphatidylserine before, but again, it's one of my more favorite uh, nootropic compounds as of late and for various reasons that we'll touch on in this video. But a little bit of the basics before we get going, phosphatidylserine is one of your primary phospholipids that are found in the diet. And now phospholipids are a class of lipids that are used in your body to kind of form what is called the phospholipid bilayer in your cell membranes. And now there are four Four primary dietary phospholipids, uh, the first being phosphatidyl inositol, the second being phosphatidyl ethanolamine, uh, the third being phosphatidylcholine, and the fourth being, uh, of course, phosphatidylserine, which is the subject, obviously, of this video in particular. Now, the reason I have specifically honed in on phosphatidylserine as opposed to the other uh, primary phospholipids is because phosphatidylserine seems to be uh, the most well-researched as well as the most promising as a supplement. Now, historically, humans have uh, consumed phosphatidylserine uh, through the diet by consuming the organ meats um, of specific animals. Now, historically, um, humans have usually always consumed um, animal tissue from uh, what's kind of been dubbed uh, from nose to tail, meaning that they eat literally everything in the animal, at least anything that is edible. And then usually they've even taken the bones and boiled the bones and kind of uh, use the bones to produce bone broth. And so historically speaking, humans have consumed high quantities of phosphatidylserine by consuming things like um, the heart, the spleen, and the liver of uh, animals like cows and pigs and and, and chickens as well. Now, it is also found in somewhat high quantities in egg yolks as well as fish, but again, the primary source is from um, organ meats, and because Western diets just don't contain a lot of organ meat, I do consider phosphatidylserine one of the more promising supplements simply because we've historically consumed a lot of it and then just typically don't nowadays. Now, when it comes to ways of consuming it today, and um, how companies are producing their supplements. Uh, there's usually two primary ways of uh, extracting phosphatidylserine, and one is through extracting it through brain tissue of cows. Um, however, supplement companies just don't do that anymore because of the, uh, the risk of bad cow disease. And so typically speaking, supplement companies are extracting phosphatidylserine from lecithin and more specifically from soy lecithin. And so because there does appear to be a divergence in how the, uh, the brain derived extract performs and um, interacts with the body as opposed to the soy um, extract. I am going to specifically focus on the research that has been done on the soy extract simply because that's literally the only form that you can find nowadays. Now, when it comes to the benefits of phosphatidylserine, there's really three primary benefits that we're going to cover in this video. And the first one we're going to talk about is its benefits to cognition. Now, I do think it is important to note here that when it comes to the benefits in cognition that there's really kind of like uh, three categories of research, so to speak, when it comes to how phosphatidylserine interacts with three specific populations. The first being healthy youth, the second being healthy elderly individuals, and then the third population that is typically studied in regards to phosphatidylserine is elderly populations that are experiencing either Alzheimer's disease or dementia or just generalized cognitive decline. Now, the first population I want to look at here specifically is how phosphatidylserine interacts with youth and more specifically healthy youth. And honestly, I think this is where phosphatidylserine really shines because there just isn't a handful of compounds uh, that have been shown to be beneficial in healthy youth. And phosphatidylserine does seem to be one of those compounds. Now, in this study in particular, phosphatidylserine was shown to improve processing speed and processing accuracy in young, healthy, active men. And in this study, phosphatidylserine was shown to improve attention, emotional lability, working memory, and all parameters on the CRPS in youth. 
Now, again, one of the reasons that I think phosphatidylserine really shines is because of its ability to improve cognition across a whole host of parameters in the youth, and the mechanisms here are fairly interesting. Now, because phosphatidylserine is so intricately involved in the production of cell membranes, and more specifically the cell membranes of nerves, when uh, high amounts of phosphatidylserine are consumed in the diet, uh, there is an improved uh, kind of fluidity of the cell membrane that kind of allows nerves to communicate and talk um, more efficiently. And some of the kind of downstream effects of phosphatidylserine, and it's, it's kind of involved in a lot of different uh, somewhat complicated um, enzymatic reactions within the central nervous system. But one of the cascading uh, effects of consuming phosphatidylserine is that it increases an enzyme known as ATP ACE, which is an enzyme that is used to produce ATP in nerve cells. And so uh, when you are able to increase the quantity of this enzyme, um, it makes your nerve cells more efficient at producing ATP and therefore at producing energy, uh, which is obviously going to have a positive uh, cognitive effect. Now, it has also been shown for various reasons to reduce uh, the amount of an enzyme known as uh, acetylcholinesterase, which is an enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine. And now, if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that acetylcholine is one of your major neurotransmitters that's active in the hippocampus and is responsible for the formation of new short-term and long-term memories. And so when you're able to increase the levels of acetylcholine by reducing the enzyme that breaks it down, uh, you are theoretically able to also increase the level of new memory formations as well. And this is probably why it is also so effective in elderly populations as well as uh, demented elderly populations because that is one of the uh, more primary initial uh, treatments for dementia is finding different ways to increase levels of acetylcholine to improve memory formation while memory is deteriorating. And in this study in particular, phosphatidylserine was also shown to improve immediate and delayed verbal recall uh, improved learning abilities and time to copy complex figures. And this study in particular was performed in healthy elderly populations. And in these two studies in particular as well that were performed in elderly populations that were in a state of cognitive decline, phosphatidylserine also improved delayed verbal recall and memory as well as reducing forgetfulness. So again, I did think it was important to kind of denote the differences between these three populations just to show that phosphatidylserine isn't just an option for elderly populations, but also seems to be an option for individuals that are younger to improve uh, cognitive performance as well as possibly uh, delay the onset of cognitive decline. Now, the second health benefit that I want to talk about real quick is phosphatidylserine's ability to improve and reduce stress. Now, this study in particular showed uh, the ability of phosphatidylserine to reduce perceived stress as well as clinical cognitive uh, biomarkers of stress in young, healthy individuals. And I do think it is worth noting here that the mechanism uh, does not seem to be that phosphatidylserine is reducing cortisol. So um, there is some research in the bovine-derived extract that shows that um, phosphatidylserine has the capacity to reduce cortisol levels, which is your primary stress hormone. However, this has also been tested in uh, the soy derivatives, and it has not been shown to do so in the soy derivatives. And so there is some other weird mechanism that's going on here whereby uh, phosphatidylserine is reducing reducing stress, not by reducing cortisol, but by some other unknown mechanism. Now, because it is so effective at reducing stress, I do like to take phosphatidylserine in the evening time as opposed to uh, the morning time. And historically speaking, humans have typically consumed it in the evening time while consuming their evening meal, um, which is typically your meat-heavy meal of the, of the day. And so regardless, I do think phosphatidylserine is a fairly promising supplement for stress and uh, it's something that I like to kind of stack with ashwagandha, which does reduce stress by reducing cortisol. And so combining these two together does make a, a fairly potent uh, combination. Now, the third health benefit, which I think is one of the more interesting health benefits, is that phosphatidylserine also seems uh, to be a potent ergogenic aid 
or performance enhancer. Now, in this study in particular, uh, there was an increased time to exhaustion in cyclists by up to 30% when they were at their 85% VO2 max, which is fairly significant. And so because this is so significant, I would like to see some further research specifically on this topic. However, phosphatidylserine has also been shown to, interestingly enough, um, improve the accuracy of golf swinging. And so it's not super clear yet here either what the exact mechanism is. There's probably, again, some type of level of uh, cognitive enhancement that's going on here. But um, specifically in that study with the cyclists, there seems to be a very interesting mechanism at play when it comes to improving physical performance to that much of a degree. And so again, I'm super interested to see some further research on this topic in particular. But when it comes to dosing phosphatidylserine, um, most of the research ranges anywhere from 100 milligrams to uh, 750 milligrams. And there does seem to be kind of like a minimal effective dose of around 300 milligrams in most individuals. Um, I tend to stick around 500 milligrams simply because that's where I kind of noticed the most effect from, uh, from taking phosphatidylserine. But generally speaking, um, you're going to be best to kind of stay around 300 to 750 milligrams for any healthy adult. Now, when it comes to the side effects of phosphatidylserine, I do think it's interesting that there was literally no known or reported side effects in any of the studies. And when you look online and places like Reddit and other forums like that, there just doesn't seem to be literally any known side effects yet. And so uh, because of this, because of its safety profile and its effectiveness for cognitive performance and physical performance, um, again, you can see why phosphatidylserine is quickly becoming one of my favorite uh, supplements. Now, I do think it is also worth mentioning that phosphatidylserine uh, has been shown to be synergistic with uh, some compounds like fish oil as well as ginkgo biloba. And so for me personally, I've done a video on ginkgo before. Um, these three compounds, fish oil, phosphatidylserine, and ginkgo, have been kind of honed down to be my personal nootropic stack right now. But I know this is probably going to be a fairly lengthy and information heavy video, so I'm going to try to wrap it up here. But if you guys have any questions about anything, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I do my best to uh, to read all those comments and respond to as many as possible. So um, again, if you have any questions, leave them down below and I will get back to you guys as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.